I just want to show you a really, really quick technique, and it's one that I used in this picture here of natural bodybuilder Nigel St. Louis. Now, the technique I'm talking about is where you can see on this back wall here that he's been composited in front of, uh, they've got this kind of flag here, and it looks very, very decayed and weathered away, like it's been there for a long time. So I want to show you very quickly how you can do that kind of effect for any pictures that you might want to do this on, or make, maybe even make look graffiti look as if it's been there a lot longer than it has. Okay, so if we just go over to uh, this image here. Now this is the original background that I used. It's actually a stock image. It's not one that I photographed myself. I got this one a while back now from iStockPhoto.com. And this is the one that I used to put Nigel in front of. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you then, first of all, by going File, Place, and I'm gonna, I've got a image on my hard drive here of a Union Jack, so we'll click Place. Now the reason I'm using Place is so that it puts it directly into the document I'm working on, like this brick wall here. If I just used File and Open, it would have opened it up as a separate document and that would mean me having to then drag it across. So using Place kind of speeds up your workflow because it puts it within your open document. But another great thing about it is, is that it also brings it in as a smart object. And you'll know from previous videos, I'm really super keen on working as non-destructively as I can. And by using smart objects, that's what it allows us to do. Now you'll notice that I stretched it out as well because the dimensions of this flag are considerably smaller than the wall itself. Ordinarily, that could have been a problem. But with something like this, it doesn't matter at all because the, the flag itself is gonna be made to look really misshapen and, a, and sort of weathered and old. So stretching it out, not an issue. Okay, so what we're gonna do then, I'm gonna show you how we can first of all blend this into the wall. And we're gonna do that full enough by using a blend mode. And I'm gonna choose one from the drop down menu on the layers panel here. I tend to think that overlay works quite nicely for this one because it really does add some contrast in it. I'm not concerned about the saturation boost at the moment because we can control that. The main thing is how the flag interacts with all these cracks and crevices on the wall below. So it kind of makes it look a lot more realistic, especially this little bit here, that looks great. It kind of looks as if it has already been painted on there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do then is I'm gonna use a brush to make it look as if it's a little bit decayed. So before I do that, I'm just gonna go down to the layer mask and click on a layer mask, a white layer mask, and then I'm gonna choose a brush. Now I'm gonna come over by pressing B on my keyboard or by coming over to the toolbar on the left-hand side, a box standard brush, and at the top left then we get these options that come up and we can choose the kind of brush we want. And what I'm looking for is a brush that's gonna be able to give me the impression of a very uneven surface, something that looks decayed. And these spatter brushes, which come by default within Photoshop, work perfectly. Obviously you can get different brushes online, lots of free resources for that, but these ones for this one work absolutely brilliant. Now I'm gonna use one of these ones here, it's a spatter brush, number 27 will be fine, so I'll click on that, and then I'll click on the top bar to make that the uh, brushes there to close down. Now I can use my right or left bracket keys to increase or decrease the size of it. And what I would ordinarily do is just kind of just come in and you can start painting it away. And you can see that you get that kind of weathered, sort of where the harsh line isn't there anymore. And I can make it look as if it's sort of weathering away. But to help to make it add even more realism to that, what we can do is go into our brush options here. Now we've got lots of options and you can probably see these before. We've got shape dynamic, scattering, texture, transfer, and so on and so forth. So all I would advise really when you're into the brush options here, just have a play around and see what you can come up with. So I'm gonna click on shape dynamics first of all, and we can see we've got size jitter. And if you look at the bottom down here, this gives you an idea of what it is you're gonna be doing to that brush. I'm using a Wacom tablet, so I always have this set to pen pressure. So the harder I press or the lighter, it kind of affects how much of this is actually gonna be applied. So we're gonna go for size jitter, just size jitter. Obviously the harder I press when I've got this tablet, because it's pressure sensitive, the more that it'll uh, increase the size of it. So we'll go for size jitter around there, angle jitter, no kind of formula to this, I'm just kind of playing around, just seeing what happens in this preview. Scattering, we can do that as well with pen pressure, so I'll probably do it like that. Count jitter, and transfer's a good one. Because now we can use opacity, because this depends however hard or light I press down with my tablet, depends how strong that brush is applying the effect. So I'm gonna go for around about 70, 75, something like that. And that's all I'll do for now. And you can see, if you look in the preview, we've got certain parts of this brush here that are very, very obvious, where it really sort of 
of this white and we can see on the outsides where it's going grey and that's because of the opacity jitter. It's given us an idea of what kind of effect we're going to get. And then all I'll do is I'll just come in and I'll start painting it randomly away off the flag. So the harder I press down, the more that effect is applied, the lighter I sort of use it. Let's just close it out of the way so we can see more of what I'm doing. And I can just keep going around here now just to taste. And because this is being used as a smart object, I can actually go in there and alter it later on. So let's say we go for something like that, it's looking good. So it obviously doesn't look like it's perfect, like it's just been applied on there. We can really come in and start bringing areas away so it doesn't look quite so obvious. And then what I do to maybe get rid of the saturation is, and I think we talked about this in a, a previous episode, and that's about using clipping mask. So I'm gonna go for something like a hue and saturation adjustment, and just so it affects only the flag, i.e. the layer directly below it, I'm gonna use a clipping mask. And that's this icon that you can see in the dialog box just here. And when I click on that, you'll see you get a little uh, right-angled arrow saying that this is only affecting directly below. Now, if you can't find the icon there, just put your cursor in between your adjustment layer and the layer you want to affect and hold down your Alt or Option key and you'll get this little icon pops up. When that appears, just click and you get exactly the same thing there. So that's a clipping mask. So now I can just reduce the saturation and you'll see in the flag there that that saturation is starting to go. And that is basically all it was. Just a little extra thing at the end there, just to show you one of the ways that I did to create this effect on the background here. And obviously once the composite's been done, we've added in some lighting effects to darken the whole thing down. So there you go, that's one more thing. Um, yeah, that's all for now.